Magandang umaga sa ating lahat. A blessed morning to all the administrators, faculty, and personnel of the CEAP member schools all over the Philippines. I am Mary Ann Cruz, the Deputy Executive Director of the CEAP, and I will be your moderator today. Welcome to Day 2 of the 2022 CEAP Child Protection Summit, brought to you in partnership with the Private Education Assistance Committee, or PEAC. Before we continue, let us begin our session with an opening prayer. And we remember that we are in the holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for the students that you have entrusted to our care. We know that they are gifts from you. Daily, we need your strength and wisdom to guide them in the way that they must go. Give us patience and a joyful heart. Let us be examples of your love and forgiveness. Help us to be the best parents, teachers, and mentors that we can be. We pray that your Holy Spirit will teach us, that your wisdom will guide us, and that your love will move us in bringing our students, your children, closer to you. May their encounters with us be an encounter with you as, they, as we try to provide a safe space for them in our schools and in other learning spaces. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So once again, good morning, everyone. For those who just tuned in with us, we welcome you to day two of the 2022 CEAP Child Protection Summit. Yesterday, we had our session on addressing mental health issues in the transition period to face-to-face -to -face learning. Today, our session is in ensuring a nurturing environment on-site and online in the transition period. We are live both on the CEAP Facebook page and the CEAP channel on YouTube. Before we begin, allow me to give you some reminders. First, as the talk is ongoing, we encourage you to post your questions or comments at the comment section on our Facebook and YouTube channel. We will ask these questions or read the comments during the question and answer portion after our two resource persons have presented. Second, on certificates. Please be informed that you will receive the certificate of attendance only upon completion of the evaluation form. The link has already been posted as part of the caption of this video, both on YouTube and on Facebook. But Please note that the link will only go live after this session, so that's around 11 o'clock, and will remain open until 5 p.m. today. So if you click it now, it's not going to open yet. We encourage you to answer the evaluation form and you will receive your certificate of attendance within three to five days. Finally, please be reminded as well that this is a free webinar brought to you in partnership with the Private Education Assistance Committee, or PEAC. Again, we are giving this to you for free. But if you want to pay it forward, please send stars on our Facebook. And you may also donate to our Kapatirang Kamagong Fund. It is a fund for helping the poor and struggling CEAP mission schools. The details are already uh, flashed right now on screen. Lastly, we encourage you to share this webinar to your networks with the hashtags, hashtag CEAP Cares, hashtag I Love Catholic Ed, and hashtag CEAP Child Protection. Our session this morning seeks to address the second objective of this summit, which is to ensure a nurturing environment conducive to learning, whether this be on-site or online, and at the same time develop a healthy perspective on the use of technology <laughs> in what we call the fifth industrial revolution that we are in right now. As we slowly transition back to face-to-face -to -face classes while still conducting some sessions online, we have to ensure that our students feel safe in these two environments. So to enlighten us on how these may be achieved, we now call on our first speaker. She is a remarkable woman. 
She was recently recognized by the tablet. This, it is a London-based weekly review as part of its list of 50 remarkable women, which they released on the occasion of this year's International Women's Day. She's a former president of St. Scholastica's College and a former provincial superior of the missionary sisters of uh, the Benedictine sisters of Tutsing. Let us welcome with a hearty round of applause the chairperson of Cyber Guardian Philippines or CGPH, Sister Mary John Mananzan OSB. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, the title of my talk is Cyber Protection for Children, a Whole Nation Approach. Sorry, it doesn't go. How come? It is not, uh, it is not functioning. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm sure you know that I have been, um, I have been an advocate of women. And uh, since I became conscious of gender oppression and the woman question in the 70s, I've spent all my efforts to contribute to the struggle against the unjust reality through the foundation of women's organization. As you know, Filipina, Gabriela, etc. Uh, these were my women's organization. And I thought I had covered all the areas of struggle until I met a woman, Chichi Sangil is her name, of Cyber Guardian who acquainted me with the contemporary battlefield and new oppression in the phenomenon called cybercrime. In her visit to our school, St. Scholastica's College, she showed us in her talk some videos how this is being perpetrated, which appalled and shocked us because it is perpetrated in homes by people who ordinarily should be willing to die to protect their children. There are many forms of cybercrime. There is uh, the most, the most, uh, what they call that, terrible and, and the most widespread is what they call the OSAIC. That is the online sexual exploitation and abuse of children. But of course, there, there is also cyberbullying and then gaming and fake news. But I will concentrate on OSAIC, the online sexual exploitation and abuse of children. Now, you will, you will be appalled by the statistics that, according to the United Nations, the Philippines, Tayo, is the global, global, uh, global, not only Asian, global epicenter of live stream child pornography. Oh my goodness. We are the global epicenter. It is the top global source of child pornography. Can you imagine it is the child sex capital of the world. It is the global hub for child pornography because child pornography is a billion dollar industry, not only in the Philippines. Of course, it comes to the Philippines, but coming from all over the world. And children are the ones traded and exploited online. I mean, this fact should really make us already, I don't know, for me, it made me already... Uh, uh, what they call this, angry, really, not only sudden, but really angry. You know? The magnitude of this crime, according to Cyber Guardian, online sexual abuse and exploitation of children, or OSEC, uh, problem ranged from 600,000 in 2018, but uh, when the pandemic came, it rose to 1,339,000. And the UNICEF report cites that Eight, eight out of ten children, eight, my goodness, more than half, eight out of ten children in the Philippines are at risk of experiencing OSAIC and cyberbullying. So, is there a safe children, safe, safe place for children? No? Uh, when I reflect, for example, we adults, when we come home in the evening after work, after uh, you know, uh, our jobs outside. We, we, 
have a sigh of relief when we come home and say, oh, thanks be to God, I am home, I'm already safe. But isn't it a terrible, it is a reality that children cannot say the same. Isn't it a terrible reality that children have no safe place even at home because the perpetrators can be at home, no? So when you reflect upon these crimes, we should ask ourselves, if a child cannot be safe in his or her own home, where in the world can she be safe? Nowhere. Terrible for, uh, for you parents, no? Who have children. What is the future of such children who are sexualized at an early age? Can they grow up as mentally and emotionally healthy adults? Some cyber seduction end in trauma and disillusionment. How can they be helped overcome their trauma? Now, of course, cyberbullying can have as consequence excessive fear, victimization and despair, and even suicide. How can these children be helped? Now, what is needed is, you know, I'm sure you know that this phrase, a whole nation approach, actually that is the government's, um, how do you call it, the method of exterminating subversion in the Philippines. They call it a whole nation approach. And I am stealing or borrowing, if you want, <laughs> this phrase, a whole nation approach, to describe the kind of approach that is needed in facing this, this terrible uh, phenomenon that we are facing in the Philippines, cybercrime. So, what is needed really, especially, uh, you know, this is not only a national problem, this is a global problem, only that the epicenter, as he said, is the Philippines, no? So like in the COVID virus pandemic, we need prevention and then actual intervention, legal action, that means uh, obtaining justice, and of course later on, the care for victims, survivor, therapy, and in our case, reintegration into the family or into the community. So this is the scope of the of uh, the work that anybody, at least that is what we, we uh, gave to ourselves, the Cyber Guardian Philippines, no? But anybody who wants to fight against this phenomenon, this have to be uh, addressed. How do you prevent it? How do you actually intervene? What kind of legal action should be done? What kind of of therapy and reintegration should be done. Now, the Cyber Guardian Philippine was founded three years ago, although it is only this year that it has sought and granted uh, SEC uh, accreditation. And uh, that is where I, I became the chairperson. And the vice chairperson we might know is uh, Father Chodolo uh, of, of uh, the family uh, the family center in the Ateneo de Manila. No? Now, what are the strategic objectives of our cyber guardians? It is a creation of effective nationwide, nationwide, safer cyberspace awareness campaign. Now, this is what we want to do. And then forging strong and intense collaboration. That's why uh, I'm very happy that we are uh, going to be collaborate with CAP among all stakeholders in co-creating and implementing holistic, safer cyberspace programs. And who are the stakeholders? All of us. Because we, uh, parents have children, we have brothers and sisters, etc. So the stakeholders are all of us, no? And then, of course, massive promotion of need for cultural renewal and values it, enhancement among everybody, no? And then creation of education materials for targeted audience because we have to uh, conscientize people and you need a lot of educational materials to do this. And engagement in the empowerment of youth. That's why we have a youth, a whole group of youth uh, organization that is belonging to the, CG, uh, to the cyber guardian. And general public in combating like cyber bullying, etc. Renewal and reintegration of survivors. So again, uh, I reiterate the different aspects of, of our struggle, no? Now, actually, the Maris brothers, I'm sure you know them, they have committed themselves uh, to the cause, the whole Asia-wide uh, 
how they call it, the, the Asia region of the Maris brothers are already very actively involved in, in this fight against cyber crime. Uh, actually, this year, I, I have persuaded actually our Association of Benedictine Schools. It's called the ABS Association of Benedictine Schools. And Sister Christine uh, Pinto, the president of St. Scholastica College, and also the chair of the ABS has, has agreed and has consented, and she's, go, she's going all over the uh, Philippines to our 10 schools to, um, to also uh, convince them that they will all be a part of the fight against cybercrime or OSE. So very important is the role of education, and, and therefore this is where we are concentrating in the CEAP. You know, I'm so happy that you have this child protection uh, uh, de department. Now what can the schools do? One, we have to educate everybody in the academic community. Most of all, of course, teachers, no? And all the staff and uh, all the people employed. In other words, all the academic community and including the parents association uh, and also the alumni. And now there is a, we have all guidance counselors. There has to be a special trainings of guidance counselors to handle effectively cases of cyber crimes. You know, it's not just a, a matter of SIM counseling, you know, it's not just a matter of, you know, this uh, depression here or uh, being uh, uh, what, lacking of self-esteem, etc. No, this is a really traumatic situation because, as you know, this means to say that um, uh, children had been uh, introduced into sex even when they are not, they are not prepared for it. Oh, I, I forgot to tell you that uh, the parents, the, the parents of, uh, are the pimps, you know, the, the parents who are supposed to be going to die for the protection of their children, they are the ones actually uh, pimping their children. And, and the rationalization is this. But anyway, the customers, that means the Germans, the Australians, the, who, who are their customers, they do not touch our children. That is what they say. But my goodness, it is even worse what is happening. You are being told, the parents are being told to touch their children. Otherwise, they, what is there to pay? No. So they have sex with their children. And how old are they? Even as babies, you know, I don't know, this perver perverts, this perversion of the mind that they they take pleasure in in outrageous uh what do you call this uh outrageous uh, acts no uh, i mean parents having sex with children even babies uh, and their children five years old seven years old son and daughter ha having sex with with each other i saw once a video where a little boy was facing the facing the uh the television and a voice coming out of the television which means the customer and the, and I heard him saying, now take take down your pants. And then another thing, now bring bring your little sister here. Imagine, unbelievable, no? So what what should we do about this, no? So guidance counselors, they have to have special modules for this. It's not enough the the usual usual uh, counseling that you do in school. Because what what is it that they are complaining about? Or oh, they are bullied by this, and they are the teachers do not are not uh, paying attention to them, etc. This is terribly traumatic, no? And it it's not going to end in five months or one year. This is going to be a lifelong trauma, no? And there should be an inclusion of cybercrime in the curriculum or stages, no? Elementary, high school, college, of course. You have to uh, the the whatever it is the module should of course be according to the level of uh, concept level of mentality of of the students no but it should be it should be done in all uh, what they call this units of the school adapt an effective system of prevention and disciplinary of course this is on cyber bullying. But of course, also, as you know already, there are sometimes cyber pornography that are put into, into the, into the, what they call this, um, social media, and then it is spread all over. Now, 
that there's some that, that there has to be something to be done about that no and of course this intensive discussion with parents about the matter now for children you know the children have to know the rights no now we cannot say to the children that they should follow everything that adults tell them no there has to be an education where the children can discern if a, if a command is wrong or right children do not need to follow anyone including their parents when they are asked to do something that is wrong or something hurtful to them no and they also should know knowledge of types of cyber threats and how to protect themselves actually the the cyber guidance we have what we call youth summit we had it two times a year last year and this is where uh, students pupils teenagers and youth they then they they come together and then uh, some youth will will uh, change experiences and they by themselves they discuss the whole uh, topic no and of course ways of count, of countering uh, cyberbullying or actual now for a little bit older children they should really proper sex education no I know the Catholic Church is not very, not very, uh, what they call, they're always suspicious of sex education. But excuse me, we are CEAP, we are Catholics. But, but can ignorance help our children? No. I mean to say there should have be a proper sex education geared to their state of maturity. And it should be holistic. It should not be just be about physical, but it should be psychological. It should be spiritual. Now, a holistic uh, sex education is definitely a must for all uh, children, especially children coming to Catholic schools. Now, this taking part in the Cyber Quen Tuhan, and this is what I'm telling you, this, uh, this is happening uh, many times, um, sponsored by the Cyber Guardians. And then there should be youth groups to combat, combat all these type, the different types of cyber crimes. Our youth organization uh, although the Cyber Guardian itself is focusing on OSAIC, actually our youth organization is focusing very much on cyberbullying. Okay. Now, for the parents, the parents have to be in, uh, educated about their obligations. And parents should not have the, the, the idea that they own their children. They do not own their children. You know, I remember, to tell it, to tell you a terrible story uh, i used to send my students uh, to the uh, police district here in united nations because i wanted them to to have uh, an idea of what is happening there and so they they came to a, a certain uh, questioning of a man who actually who actually raped her child his child of eight years and they were putting down what he is saying and can you imagine what he's saying is like this? I am her father. I have the first right to her. Can you imagine right to her? That is what I'm telling the, you know, when I give a, actually the Institute of Women's Studies as a module for men, uh, what they call this, gender issues for men. And I always tell men, you know, it may not be your fault, but you have, you have a virus in your computer and they all oh what is that virus i tell them you know because of the long-standing um uh, long-standing presence of uh, of uh, patriarchy which is the absolute rule of father or absolute rule of man there is a remnant according to ha ha uh, what they call carl jung that wonderful uh, uh psychologist according to carl jung when there is a long-standing practice of uh, patriarchy there is a remnant in the subconscious of men and what is this remnant in the subconscious of men it is the attitude or the sense of uh, how they call the proprietorship you know owning and entitlement with regards to women so the moment they see women they feel they are entitled to her body to her services to her to her obedience to everything so this has to be made clear to men that's why we are giving education to men also no so they do not own the children they have no right as what that father said first right to her child 
Okay. And they have to be told that OSEIC is punishable by law. You know, we have uh, we have connection with uh, what the the uh, TNP. Um, uh, there's a wonderful woman. Uh, her name is Sheila Portento of the PNP. She's the one in, in charge of, uh, you know, really apprehending uh, pimps. And uh, I also know Kathy. Kathy is in the International Justice um, Organization that actually also takes part in the raid. And two weeks ago only she told me that they just raided uh, 24 houses. So they were able to rescue uh, or they, they, were, they were able to give justice to, to houses, 24 houses of children, you know. But the, the, whenever they raid a house, they take the children and give them and uh, entrust them to the DSWD. But the parents are really put into trial. And there is really, uh, if, if you are reading the PDI, uh, about uh, not even one month ago, I read that there were five uh, parents in Cebu that were really uh, tried and they their uh, what they call punishment is 20, uh, 25 years or 12, uh, no, 12 years in prison. So there is really an apprehension like that. So it is punishable by law. And the DSWD, who have custody of the children, victims, they are the ones who give the uh, therapy, etc., etc. But I'm still wanting to, uh, to, in, to, how do you call that, to research how much counseling are they giving because for me, this is a lifetime therapy. It cannot be just after one month or two months, then you can go home. Oh my God, that's that's terrible, no? Now, for the law, uh, for the, as we said, this is an all-nation approach. For the government, there should be stricter laws against cyber crimes, regulations, and monitoring of TV show, uh, shows, no? I mean, it should be, it should, you know, we have very good laws sometimes, but the implementation of all our laws are really, really defective. Just think only of the, you know that we have the best laws uh, on women. We have about 30 plus laws on women with uh, Magna Carta for women with um, Vowsi and all that. We have wonderful laws, the best laws in, in the whole world. Really, I can say that, no? And we, we are the only ones also who have, a, who have a Magna Carta for women. And we also are the only ones who have a mandated uh, what they call this um, mainstreaming of gender in the academy. I hope you know that, CEAP. You know that all tertiary education should have got, got uh, focal point in all universities, and they should really take care of the administrative, the curriculum, the research, and the uh, and, uh, outreach. If you do not yet have a, a God focal point, better establish it now, because that is what you are supposed to do since... 2015 already now but as I, as I said again it is really lamentable that our implementation of our wonderful laws is totally uh, disappointing or oh, no it's totally frustrating really so there should be a, a better implementation stricter laws better into and courts of justice should really punish perpetrators no and the DSWD, as I said, I'm still going to study what kind of intervention they do because I'm really not sure about whether it is effective or not. No? And then, of course, the Philippine, uh, you know, the commission, PCW, uh, Philippine Commission on Women, who are in charge of conscientizing all government uh, officials, then they should include in their gender uh, consciousness of their government officials about or say, no, gender violence against women and children. Now, we we belong to the church, the CEAP, we are all in the Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines. This is really, uh, we are in the church. And the church has to have a big, big role in this, uh, in this uh, matter. For example, Paris Peace should be given a seminar on cyber crimes, since most of the perpetrators and victims are members of the parish. You know, this this is not happening in a brothel. It is happening in ordinary homes in the parish. I am sure oh, all barangays in the Philippines belong to a parish. 
So they are all parishioners, the perpetrators as well as the victims. So the parish priests should have a great consciousness about what is happening in their parish, no? And they should provide, provide certain. For example, uh, they should provide for for uh, a guidance uh, department in their parish. You know, they should have, you know, so that they. And then they should be very vigilant about. I mean, they have these parish organizations that are who belong to this are the parents or the inhabitants of the parish. They should be vigilant in looking at their neighbors, whether a certain uh, TV, uh, what they call this, um, transactions are going on. It is happening right in the midst of them. They are not in a separate brothel house or everything. So all the parishioners should be so, so conscientized that they are very vigilant and they are very sensitive about discovering where these places of cyber prostitution is are being uh, held, no? And then there are mandated organizations, uh, you know, Mother Butler, Catholic Women's League, Legion of Mary, etc. All of these organizations, and most of them are women organizations, they should be made aware of the matter and they should be really uh, included in the campaign against this uh, terrible uh, phenomenon affecting our children, no? So pa parishes, as I said, already could have counseling centers for victims. And also maybe also shelters, you know, because sometimes they need a shelter. You know, I can tell you, uh, well, it says here, I will, after this, I'll tell you something. The resources of the church and religious congregation could be used to put up refuge houses for victims of cybercrime. Now, I would like to, at this point, to, to, really, uh, to really praise the... Uh, how do you call this, the sisters who have the Laura Vicuña home. I don't know if you have heard of it. The Laura Vicuña home of the Salesian sisters. They have a wonderful uh, way of really, uh, how do you call it, rehabilitating victims. Now, they do, they do not concentrate on cyber crime, but they are concentrating on real abuse of children like incest, etc. But do you know their program? Their program is to get these children because how can you put them in their homes when the parents are the perpetrators? So these children uh, are living in the center in Laura Bicuña. They are made to go to school like everybody else and then they have counseling, etc., etc. And they remain in Laura Bicuña until they are 18 years old. And they will not be uh, uh, allowed, uh, they will not be set free. So they will not be uh, what they call this. Uh, allowed to get out until they know that they have a job so it is a lifelong help you know they they guide them through childhood and they are not uh, going to be uh, what they call that allowed just to to be homeless again afterward but they have already a job before they get out now that is for me a model of any rehabilitation any reintegration any uh, help uh, in in uh, protecting or in rehabilitating the victims of cyber crimes. Now, role of civil society. Uh, all women's organizations should include this in their advocacy. Gabriela, uh, Babaika, etc., etc. All the women's organizations. There are so very many, but since they are women's organization, they should be concerned about the protection of children. So, all women's organization. All legal organizations can give legal services to prosecute perpetrators of cybercrime. Oh, I saw that there is a, one from Miriam College. I am glad that they have a, a lawyer there, and I'm sure that is what she's doing. And of course, very important media. Since this is a media crime, because it's a cybercrime, the, the media practitioners who are socially oriented should really concentrate also, should focus their attention on this phenomenon and should write on this matter to educate the whole of society. So, to conclude, I would like to repeat here what I said previously. If little children cannot be safe in their own homes, where can they be safe? This is the agonizing question I ask myself and others over and over again. And it urges me to pursue this struggle to put an end to cyber crimes where the perpetrators are those who are supposed to protect and not to exploit. 
and where the safe haven we call home becomes the slaughterhouse of children's innocence and the grave of the bright verse about those who scandalize children. I'm sure you know this verse. It says, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him or her to have a he heavy stone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. How strong can that, uh, can the words be more stronger than that? So my call to all of us is, let us put an end to sexual abuse and exploitation of children. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sister Mary John, for reminding us that the work of keeping our students safe needs a whole nation approach. We will have more of Sister Mary John later during the question and answer segment. In the meantime, allow me to introduce our next speaker. She will be giving us the legal framework on child protection relative to online abuse and exploitation. So she will discuss existing laws that currently cover online child protection and exploitation. Our, our speaker was a social welfare specialist at the Department of Social Work and Development Central Office handling women and children programs, the former executive director of Child Justice League Incorporated, and is currently an independent gender and development consultant. Let us welcome with a virtual round of applause the director of the Child's Right Advocacy Center of Miriam College, Attorney Mylen Gonzalez. Alice Esquivel. Take it away, Attorney Miles. Hello, good morning everyone. Uh, marami marami salamat po sa introduction, uh, Ma Mary Ann. Good morning po, Sister Mary Jan. Hi. So, um, I, I hope, Sister, it's okay for me if I call you Sister MJ. Okay. Of course, so, do that. Yes, That's how they call me. <laughs> yes, Sister. Maganda maganda umaga po sa lahat ng present ngayon sa atin pong session. So I'm here po to discuss the legal framework on child protection relative to online abuse and exploitation. Sister Mary Jan po, Sister MJ Kanina, highlighted the importance of uh, for us parents. No, I'm also a parent. I have a daughter, 10 years old po, no? And uh, of course, uh, with uh, the yung, yung pang-evolve po ng mga different forms of abuse and exploitation ng children, syempre, ando doon po yung fear natin as a parent to always protect our children. So it's very important, no, na tama po yung sinabi ni Sister MJ Canida that as parents, we should know the law itself, no? And we have to punish the perpetrator so that, you know, this um, abuse and exploitation which happens online and offline to our children or to the kids um, ay matatapos po o mag mapuput to an end na po. So, the objectives of my session actually ay tatlo lang po. Number one is for, for me po to be able to define to you what is child online abuse no? and exploitation. And of course, understand the extent of child online abuse and exploitation and learn the legal framework. So I'll be discussing the current uh, laws that will cover online child abuse and exploitation. Or for example, if your child or your students are victims of online abuse and exploitation, ano yung pwedeng i-file? What can, what can we file sa Office of the City Prosecutor, Provincial Prosecutor, and later on, ano yung ipoprosecute sa ating pong mga courts? So first po, um, i-define muna natin ano ba yung online child abuse and exploitation. When we say online child abuse and exploitation, we are technically referring to any type of abuse that happened on the web. So, gumagamit siya ng ating World Wide Web or ng internet. So, it could be um, happening through the social networks, like for example, yung ating um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, no? Or while our kids are playing online games. For example, di ba, uso-uso ang Robux, 
usong-uso po ang DOTA, ang COC, ang ML. So, online child abuse and exploitation can happen no, even while our kids are playing these online games. It can also happen while our kids are using mobile phones. Kaya nga po, uh, dapat tayo mga parents, maingat tayo sa pag kay ng mobile phone sa ating mga anak. And every now and then dapat we check no yung kanila pong mga online or social media accounts. So, ang online child abuse po is a unique form of child abuse. Why? Because it happens virtually, no? And most of the time po ang online child abuse and exploitation is anonymous in nature. But of course, this can happen uh, also face to face no Pw pwede magkaroon ng necessary physical contact once na yung bata na inganyo na nagroom na tapos nakipag-meet up na doon sa kanyang kausap and a classic example of that was, would be the one that was uh, recently um na, na, na news no yung pong isang uh, 13 years old uh, na pumunta sa Quezon because uh, na meet niya yung guy sa while playing online games and later on umalis siya ng bahay pumunta siya sa Quezon and you know the abuse happened na po doon sa uh, sa bata while the child was with the uh, with the adult na I think 27 years old yung adult male na yon so yung online child abuse po pwede po mangyari no physically kapag ka po nagroom na yung bata at then later on nakipag meet up na siya okay so in the perpetrators po in online abuse and exploitation can be a stranger or someone po na previously known to the victim. And they occur in a variety of forms, and that includes, among others, of course, cyberbullying, grooming, at yung binabanggit po ni Sister MJ kanina, yung online sexual abuse and exploitation po ng ating mga bata. By the way, you know, when I was handling cases, even until now, I'm handling cases po pro bono of um child abuse because I'm currently the legal consultant of Child Protection Unit ng Philippine General Hospital. So, I prepare no yung kanila mga pleadings while they are while we are ano no having the cases heard ng ating uh, fiscal no. Uh, I also handle some uh, pro bono cases in court. But when I was with um the SWD and also as uh, when I was ED of Child Justice League Incorporated, I really handled most of the cases po ng child abuse. At totoo po talaga yon na yung binabanggit po ni Sister MJ that even inside the home, hindi po safe yung ating kids. There are parents na sila pa po yung um, nag, ano, nag, nag, um, do you call this, nag sa kanilang anak to engage in phonography. Uh, in phonographic materials or child pornography or even in sila po yung traffic sa kanilang mga anak. So it happens po, no? And sometimes nakakalungkot that um, it's the parents themselves, no? Na perpetrator nitong ganitong mga crimes. So dun po sa definition ng online child abuse, makikita po natin may tatlong common forms uh, ang online child abuse and exploitation. One of that is cyberbullying or what we call internet bullying. And technically, this happens or this occurs when an individual or group electronically distributes negative, false, or otherwise harmful, harmful content about an individual or group. And usually, they, um, these people use personal or private information. And this personal or private information causes humiliation or distress to the victim survivor of cyberbullying or internet bullying. No? Um, this type of online child abuse is prevalent among children. Uh, and sometimes, has, based on studies nga po, sinasabi na ito yung extension ng bullying na nangyayari po sa loob ng skwelahan. And in fact, in a Canadian research study, uh, they found out though po that children who were victims of cyberbullying and were also bullied in school were more likely to bully others over cyberspace. Okay? Another form din po ng um, online child abuse is what we call grooming. Ito lagi po itong ginagamit ng mga perpetrators, particularly on online sexual abuse and exploitation of children. So ano yung grooming? Pwede po itong mag-occur online or offline. No? So grooming is a method used by offenders that involves building a trust with a child and the adults around the child. So, kinukuha po yung trust, not only of the child, but the adults around the child. The purpose of that is to gain access to and time alone with the children. So, pag meron silang time alone with the children, doon na po pwedeng mag-engage 
yung kanilang online sexual exploitation sa bata or in, in person kung nag-meet up na po sila. So yung example pong binanggit ko kanina, the 13-year-old um, child, no, the 13-year-old female, was groomed noong kanyang kausap while playing games. And in fact, sometimes what they do is um, nagpaparamdam sila kunwari na they are very caring, they befriend that child, no? they um, offer mga different gifts. No? For example, sige, bibigyan kita ng libreng Robux, o, di ba? bibigyan kita ng mga libreng diamonds or gems. So yung bata, nag-groom siya na, ah, mabait siya, di ba? Uh, kaya minsan, kung anong sabihin niya, sinusunod po ng bata. There are also instances that, like for example, in child pornography, ito nakita namin to, no? while I was handling cases, in child pornography, ginugroom yung bata na, you know, showing the body uh, to, an to, an to another person, to, to a, um, also a player sa kanyang uh, games, no? is normal. So they, 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 they have this tendency to normalize yung sexual behavior. So yung bata, di ba, alam naman mga bata, no? yung discernment na yung discernment or judgment portion ng brain ng mga yan, hindi pa po yan fully developed. In fact, when, when I had my training with um, the Child Protection Unit, sinasabi nga nila, yung portion po ng brain ng isang individual that is focused on discernment no? uh, or judgment, nalidevelop yan at the age of 18 up to 24. So imagine mo yung bata, ang dali talaga po niyang mag-groom o mapapaniwala o mapapabilive na, you know, this thing is normal. Showing your body parts, you know, um, taking off your clothes online is normal. May, ganun po yung ginagawa ng mga perpetrators. Okay? In extreme cases, offenders, sometimes they use threats and physical force to sexually assault or abuse a child, no? So most of the time po, groomers convince children to perform sexual acts. Um, ang, ang mga classic example ng mga sexual acts na to is sending of nude photographs. Tapos later on, they will blackmail the child that they will threaten to release the information about them if they will not follow po yung kanilang gustong gawin. So this is a common form of online child abuse and exploitation. Then of course, the last uh, is yung tinatawag ting online sexual abuse. The one that was highlighted by Sister MJ. No? So this online sexual abuse is a relatively modern trend kung saan po yung perpetrators, they utilize modern forms of technology. For example, yung mga live stream web, uh, camera, cell phones, or social media. And most of the time, they coerce targeted victims into inappropriate and sometimes illegal sex acts. So it differs from other forms of sexual abuse since this could be perpetrated steadily on a global scale. Kaya po kalimitan po sa, un sa online sexual abuse yung offenders na i-evade nila yung capture. Okay? Kasi nga po gumagamit ng uh, atin pong tinatawag na teknolohiya. Eh sa technology pwede mo namang i hindi hindi mapakita kung sino ka. You can actually use different names, no? You can be a different person. Like for example, uh, if you have seen the Globe commercial, there's a very good uh, Globe commercial, no? A child um was uh, parang yung bata nakatalikod as the child was talking to someone and then kaharap niya lang is cellphone, no? And in, in that particular gadget, ang, ang akala ng bata, ang kausap niya ay bata rin. Pero behind that, no? Adult pala yung kausap niya. So, ang dali pong itago. Kaya nga po most of the time in uh, online sexual abuse, no? Uh, nai-evade ng offenders yung capture. Kasi yung, tech, yung, yung mga predators po ng online sexual abuse, they take uh, the, uh, parang they take, um, they use technology po, no? They, they use technology to evade arrest and they take, they, they, um, they use the technology um, as an opportunity, no? To pray dun sa kanilang mga bata at mga youth na uh, victim survivors or yung kanilang tina-target po na bibiktimahin. So, yung um, online sexual abuse po, often po ang target ay children. Uh, most of the time, they bully, emotionally manipulate or blackmail or they befriend willing communicators on the web para ma-obtain yung kanilang desires. And based on studies, 13% of children receive negative unwanted attention of a sexual nature on the internet. So the predators po make contact with prospective targets in variety of settings. Pero ang most prolific place that 
perpetrator stroll are chat rooms. Okay? So, in the study po, 76% ng mga known first encounters with online sexual predators po ay nangyayari sa mga chat rooms. At ano yung mga chat rooms ito? Ito yung ating FB Messenger, MySpace, no? Instagram, Twitter, yung mga pag naglalaro tayo ng online games. Di ba? May yung mga online games, yung mga chat rooms yan eh. So, doon po commonly uh, nangyayari yung first encounter ng ating mga bata doon sa mga sexual predators. So, ano yung pwede natin gawin, no? Sa, in our country, no? Ano yung pwede mong i-file, no? If your children, your daughters, your sons, no? Are victims of child uh, online exploitation and abuse. So, I'll be discussing the legal framework on child protection relative to online abuse and exploitation. Ito yung currently ginagamit And namin, no, kaming mga child rights advocate na batas para po um, kasuhan no, yung pong perpetrator, uh, mga sexual predators po uh, dito po sa ating online abuse and exploitation. So technically, of course, we know we have internationally, we have the UNCRC because of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, where we're in, we are a signatory. We have our uh, Philippine Legal Framework on Child Protection and Promotion. That's Republic Act 7610. At um, nag-evolve po kasi, nag-evolve kasi po yung mga types of abuses. So dahil may online na po, currently we are actually using po itong mga batas na to, which uh, I will be discussing the salient provisions. No? So we have RA 9775 or the Anti-Child Phonography Law. Uh, ito po, pag pinoprosecute namin itong Uh, Anti-Child Phonography Law, nililink po namin sa Republic Act 10175 or the Anti-Cyber Crime Act of 2012. No? And then of course, we have Republic Act number 10627 or the Anti-Bullying. No? And of course, yung pinaka-recent po, Republic Act 11313 or ating Safe Spaces Act. So may mga, ito mga laws po na to, they have, uh, they cover po no? yung tinatawating online abuse and exploitation on children. So, a little bit lang po ng background ng UNCRC, no? Para po sa mga parents. Um, the UNCRC stands for United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. So, it's a legally binding international agreement or instrument. It, this is one of the most commonly endorsed human rights treaty, no? And this um, recognizes the rights of children so that they will be able to grow up in the spirit of peace, dignity, tolerance, freedom, equality, and solidarity. So, the Philippines po is a signatory to this international instrument. And this international instrument um, highlights the four core principles of child protection. So, kaya nga po, uh, very important po talaga itong, itong dokumentong to as a legal framework on child protection. So, dito po nakapaloob yung principles of non-discrimination. Yung pong sinasabi that in everything that we do, we have to ensure that the paramount consideration would be the best interest of the child. Meaning, Everybody po, no? Private sector, government sector, civil society organizations, no? Everybody, when you do an action, when you perform an act, you have to ensure that yung paramount consideration mo is always the best interest of the child. In all Supreme Court decisions po na ang pinag-uusapan ay karapatan ng bata, lagi niyo pong makikita itong core principle ng best interest of the child. And then of course, andyan din po yung child rights to life and maximum survival and development and the res respect for the abuse of the child or the evolving capacity of the child to make decisions. So itong, ito po yung apat na core principles highlighted no, sa atin pong Convention on the Rights of the Child. And then of course, yung UNCRC also um, elucidates no or kasama po diyan yung different category of rights no so we have of course yung survival rights ng bata natin no the right to life right to parental care and support no right to adequate standard of living and right to health we also have the right to yung kanilang mga tinatawag na developmental rights no so kasama diyan yung right to education right to play leisure and cultural activities and of course right to access information that's why at MC no at PM College um, When the CRAC, the Child Rights Advocacy Center, was um, 
inaugurated, no, the first thing that we did, no, was to educate the children to uh, let them know what are what are their rights and how to protect themselves because they have the right to access information. And then of course, yung participation rights and yan. So tandaan natin, one of the core principle of child protection under UNCRC is the right to respect yung views ng bata, no, the evolving capacity of the child. So therefore, dahil may evolving capacity ang bata, dapat they participate. Um, isa sa mga pinupush namin before, no, when Gina Di Venecia was still, uh, sorry, Gina Lopez was still, ano, no, was still alive, no, kasi siya po yung uh, isa sa mga active din po pagdating sa karapatan ng bata, was to have a party list that would really focus on children's rights, no? Kasi sa ngayon, parang meron sa youth, but wala talaga nakafocus on children. Kasi nga, gusto namin sana magkaroon ng ng ano, ng participation, evolving capacity of children to decide for themselves. Because they have that, ano, they have that, they have that um, capacity, no? To decide for themselves also. Yung maganda po yung bata, pati nuturuan mo na na mag-make decisions. Okay? So, sabi nga po ni Sister Kanya, di ba, um, part ng part po ng pinopromote ng Magna Carta of Women is gender mainstreaming. So mainstreaming po um, the gender perspective in the basic education. Meron pong DepEd policy niyan. So kasama po doon sa tinuturo sa mainstreaming is giving the children, particularly girl children, yung kanilang right to decide for themselves, especially for their yung kanila pong mga yung kanilang katawan at yung mga bagay na may kinalaman po sa kanilang uh, pagkatao sa kanilang pag sa kanilang humanity no and then of course andyan po yung protection rights no highlighted ang dami-dami pong protection rights ng isang bata kung makikita mo diyan the right to be protected from abuse and maltreatment no the right not to be trafficked the right not to be sexually exploited no and abused and the right to be protected from all forms of exploitation andyan din po yung binabanggit ni Sister MJ kanina yung um, recovery no and integration, social integration ng child victim survivors. Dapat comprehensive po yung programs natin for them. Um, as a former social worker no, of the DSWD, lagi namin ina-highlight na yung pong pagtulong sa isang biktima o survivor po ng abuse, dapat holistic. When you say holistic, hindi lang po dapat nakafocus dun sa victim survivor. Kailangan pati yung support system. And when we talk about support system, support system, and then yung family, and then yung community, and all other po na mga uh, fact, um, stakeholders na pwedeng tumulong sa bata po para siya mag para siya makarecover dun sa abuse na kanyang pinagdaanan. So kasama po yan sa protection rights, no, yung holistic approach para po sa kanyang recovery and social integration. And then and po yung rights ng children in need of special protection. Okay. So, uh, because of UNCRC, of course, dahil tayo signatory, nagkaroon po tayo ng Republic Act 7610 or yung ating pong Philippine Legal Framework on Child Protection and Promotion. So, ito po yung Special Protection of Children Against Abuse, Exploitation, and Discrimination Act. Matagal na po itong law na to. Um, This is a 1992 law. Okay? So, sin dito po clearly define sino ang bata. And in RA 7610, very clear po that child refers to any human being under 18 years of age or any person 18 years of age or over pero unable to fully take care po and protect themselves from abuse, neglect, cruelty, or exploitation or discrimination because of a physical or mental disability or condition. So pwedeng above 18 siya uh, or 18 or above 18 siya pero hindi niya kayang protection na ng kanyang sarili because of a certain um, physical or mental disability or condition. So, in the eyes of the law, bata yan. Okay? So, yan po yung definition natin. Well, this definition of uh, a child, no, um, galing din po yan sa UNCRC, sa United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. And in this particular law, no, since this is our first, no, our first law on child protection, legal framework nga po na, ng Philippines to, in, in terms of child protection, dito po tinifine ano yung child abuse. At sinasabi dito na yung maltreatment, whether habitual or not, so pag sinabing habitual or not, pwedeng kahit sang beses mo lang ginawa, uh, basta maltreatment siya at nagpo-fall siya under dun sa mga enumerations, that will be considered child abuse under Republic Act 7610. At ano itong mga to? Of course, we have psychological abuse or emotional maltreatment. So, andyan po yung mga 
act or deeds natin or words natin which debases, degrades, or demeans the intrinsic worth and dignity of a child as a human being. Remember, yung bata tao yan, may rights yan. Di ba? Yung, child, y- yung rights ng bata, human rights yan. So, may, may intrinsic worth and dignity and given yan. Basic yan na principle ng human rights. no? So, once you do an act or deed, that the basis degrades or demeans the intrinsic court and dignity niya, that is considered maltreatment. That is a form of psychological abuse. Okay? So, under the law, child abuse yon. The next is, of course, we have physical abuse or the infliction of any bodily harm. Kakalungkot, no? Minsan hindi natin alam ano na ba yung discipline tsaka hindi discipline. Very, very, ano kasi po eh, very thin yung line ng ano ba yung discipline at ano ba yung you physical abuse. Kaya nga po ngayon uh, at Child Protection Unit, we are promoting positive discipline. Pwede naman pwede naman po disiplinahin ng bata hindi mo kailangan saktan o pasaan. 'Di ba? Because when you do that, when you inflict any bodily harm, that is child abuse. Okay. And then of course, you have neglect and cruelty. No, that's part also of child abuse no under RA 7610. Ito po yung mga unreasonable deprivation of basic needs for survival such as food and shelter, yung failure to immediately give medical treatment sa isang injured child, which of course results in impairment of his growth and development or permanent incapacity or death. And dyan din po yung kinokos mo or pinipermit mo ang bata na maging true want, no? Uh, you allow your child to possess or carry deadly weapons. You allow your child to drive without and or fake licenses or you fail to give education commensurate to a family, social station, and financial condition. So all of this, po, they fall under <clears throat> the category neglect and cruelty. And then of course, <clears throat> yung pinaka-last po na form ng child abuse na ito nga po yung nag-evolve na, no? nagkaroon ng panibago mukha because of the internet, no? yung tinatagot yung sexual abuse. So originally po, sa RA 7610, ang kinocover nito is rape. Um, that could be by a family member or by a stranger. So, kapag ka po bata ang nirape, ina-apply po namin yung RA 8353 in relation to RA 7610 kasi minor siya. No? And then, of course, andyan yung acts of passiveness, child prostitution, at yung involvement po ng children in indecent shows and pornographic materials. So, because of the internet, nag-evolve po ito, itong sexual abuse na to. Yan. So, pero kung makikita niyo po, 1992 kasi to eh, itong batas na to. And because of the evolution of the different forms of crimes, no, that could happen on the child, no. Parang lahat nag evolve no. Sabi nga nila, the only constant thing in this world is change, no. Kaya po, nagkaroon ng mga iba't ibang batas uh, that uh, would also cover po yung yung mga ibang klase naman po ng pang-aabusong ginawa sa bata. That may that may have evolved no after the enactment of Republic of 7610 and one of that po is yung tinatawag na child pornography okay kasi dati yung child pornography picture picture lang eh diba ngayon hindi na picture mayroon ng electronic mayroon ng audio no and dami may mechanical na may may drawings nga ako nang being under 18 no? years of age or and then and then we have now yung tinatawag nating of course yung online no yan So, pag-usapan natin yung selling provisions ng Anti-Child, Anti-Child Phonography Act of 2009, no? Ito po yung RA 9775 or the Act Defining and Penalizing the Crime of Child Phonography. And uh, of course, it prescribes the penalties. Ang pinakamataas sa penalty po dito ay reclusion perpetua. Okay, yung habang buhay na pagkabilanggo. So, bakit nagkaroon ng uh, Anti-Child Phonography Act ang Pilipinas, no? Or ang... Uh, Iba't ibang bansa. Well, technically po, tulad ng binanggit po ni Sister MJ kanina, ang Pilipinas po talaga isa sa mga nasa, bil- nasa listahan no? ng kung saan po eh, ang taas ng hindi lang po child pornography, kundi ang involvement po or victimization po ng mga bata online. Particularly when it comes to sexual abuse and exploitation. So, approximately 20% po of all internet pornography involves children. And the average age po ng first internet exposure to pornography is 11. Tapos imagine nyo po, hardcore exposures na po 80%, yung edad ay 15 to 17. So tandaan natin yung definition ng child, no? Sa Pilipinas is below 18 or pwedeng 18 or over ka but you cannot fully take care of yourself because of some 
mental or physical disability or condition. Sometimes, um, may mga perpetrators na pinipray nila are those who have developmental delays. Kasi nga, mas madali mo silang ma magroom, Okay? So, because of that, of course, we have to protect yung rights ng ating children. Okay? Uh, at um, iba, tulad na uulitin ko po, no, uh, ang, ang pang-aabuso noong 1992, 93, 94, iba na po yung form ngayon. Ang dami na pong involved sa child pornography. That's why this law came into being and it redefined na po yung tinatawag nating child pornography. In the 1992 law, yung RA 9710, ang nakalagay lang, nakalagay lang kasi po doon, involvement in decent shows. No? So para kinakailangan, may, may participation in real na mga indecent shows, no? But in, in, ano, in, um, in, in, um, later years po, nakita na po real or simulated po yung involvement sa child pornography ng isang bata. And because walang nagpo-cover na lo doon, binuo na, na, nabuo po itong child pornography lo natin, or anti-child pornography act. <clears throat> Tito po dinefine what is child pornography. So sinasabi dito, Um, there is child pornography when there is representation of a child uh, engaged or involved in real or simulated explicit sexual activities. So covered na yung simulated. And the representation is done either through visual, audio, written, or pwedeng combination noong visual, audio, or written. Dati kasi mga photographs ang makikita mo. Ngayon kasi ang, ang child pornography pwede pong written, pwedeng drawings eh. Okay? I have seen no a phonographic uh, material drawings po no parang manga pa nga yung drawings nung ano tas bata yung involved doon sa porno material para siyang webtoon okay so imagine nyo nag-iiba yung klase din po ng pag-commit ng crimes kaya kinakailangan po nating um i-adapt din yung ating mga batas para i-cover yung mga gantong klase ng pang-aabuso sa ating mga bata So yung representation which is done visually, audio, or written, or combination, pwedeng ito po ay electronically done, mechanically done, digitally done, optically done, or magnetically done. No? So maraming means kung paano mo ni-represent yung real or simulated na engagement or representation ng isang bata sa explicit sexual activities. At hindi lang po yan, yung Anti-Child Pornography Act natin, nag-add pa ng Colatilia Provision na or any other means. Bakit? Kasi ngayon po may internet na. Okay? So, remember pag electronic kasi gumagamit ka ng microchips eh. So, pwede yun yung mga CD, may mga USB, ganyan. So, yung any other means covered po nito yung ating internet. Okay? Kaya po, kapag ka po yung uh, pang-aabuso po sa bata, uh, yung involvement po ng, ng bata in child pornographic materials ay ginamita ng computer system, Um, ina-apply na po namin yung RA10675, yung cybercrime law, kasi pinapataas niya po yung penalty. Makikita niyo po yun later on. Okay? So ano yung mga unlawful or prohibited acts no? dito sa ating anti-child pornography law? Of course, andyan po yung pag-hire, pag-employ, pag-persuade, o pag-induce ng isang bata, or even coercing po, uh, whenever you create or produce any form of child pornography. Andyan din po yung ikaw yung nagpo-produce, Okay? Nagmamanufacture, nagdadirect ka, no? nakikreate ka ng any form of child phonographic materials. Or you are into publish, publication, transmission, sell, or distribution, or even broadcasting, no? or promotion po, no? ng any child uh, phonographic materials. Or nagpossess ka ng mga any forms of child phonographic materials with the intent to sell, distribute, publish, or broadcast. Unlawful yan. Or prohibited yan. So paano masasabi na Uh, may intent ka to sell, to distribute or publish or broadcast kapag nahulihan ka in possession ng three or more articles and child pornographic materials of the same form. So, kinima facie evidence yan na may intention ka to sell, distribute, publish, or broadcast. Or kaya naman, uh, you knowingly, willfully, and intentionally provide a venue para doon i-commit yung child pornography. May mga ganun eh, sabi nila, ay hindi ko po alam ni. Eh. Di ba na yung pala pong bahay ko, doon pala po ginagawa yung child pornography. Ikaw naman, nagpaparenta ka, di mo alam. Di ba? Well, the, 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 evid, the, ano ngayon, the, the burden um, uh, to prove na hindi mo alam lies on you. But as far as the law is concerned, you can be prosecuted. 
Okay, because you provide a venue for the commission of the Anti-Child Phonography Act because that's unlawful or prohibited. No? And then of course, um, kung ikaw naman ay mga film distributors, chapters, and telecommunication companies, kung halimbawa nag, um, nag, uh, in cooperation ka with other entities para i-distribute yung any form of child pornography, unlawful din po yan. Now, a parent can also be penalized under this law or a person having custody or control of a child, kung knowingly, pinipermit niya po yung bata to engage or participate in any form of child pornography. Yung binabanggit po ni Sister MJ kanina, totoo po yun. <clears throat> May mga parents po na ina-assista nga po nila yung anak nila, no? sila po yung nagpipermit na ma-engage yung bata in child pornography kasi malaki yung bayan. Okay? Binabayaran kasi po sila. Misa yung iba nasisilaw talaga sa, sa pera, especially if they are, you know, if, if, if medyo kapos, no, sa... Um, pangtustos no sa pangailangan ng pamilya. So if 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 you are a parent no, poverty is not a a reason for you to allow your children to engage or participate in any form of child pornography or to up uh, it's not a justification for you to allow your child to be uh, to be abused no um sexually or online no or exploited. So pwede ka po makasuhan uh, as a parent And then andiyan din po yung uh, yun nga po yung pag-engage mo sa grooming, no? Yung ginugroom mo yung bata to engage in child pornography or pandering. Pag pandering ito yung pag-distribute, pag-sell ng pornographic materials or ikaw willfully ina-access mo yung pornographic materials. So these are all unlawful or prohibited acts including po yung pag-conspire uh, or pag-possess ng any form of child pornographic materials. So all of these po unlawful or prohibited acts po yan. So kapag ka po... <clears throat> May nakita kayo na ginagawa ito, you can actually um, uh, report no the, the the act no to the police officers, Barangay Protection for Children <clears throat> or even the DSWD para po ma-prosecute yung mga tao na nag-e-exploit ng ating po mga children. Now like what I've said kanina, kapag ka po Um, yung pong child pornography ay ginamitan ng any other means like the computer system or internet, we usually when we prosecute, uh, amin po itong inililink dun sa Republic Act 10175 or the Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012 because under this law po, okay, yan, under this law kasi po, punishable act po yung mga tinatawag na content-related offenses. Like for example, if you're a person found guilty of pornography, yung penalty mo under RA 9775, kapag ginamitan mo kasi po ng computer system yung child pornography, uh, child, um, yung, yung, ano mo, yung unlawful acts mo under child pornography, ang penalty po is one, one degree higher. So for example, yan. Kung halimbawa dito po, uh, nag-hire ka, nag-coerce, nag-produce ka, nag-distribute ka, sa anti-child pornography kasi po, reclusion temporal, maximum period yung penalty. So kapag ka po ginamita mo ng computer system siya, eh, you use a computer system, um, dun po sa pag-commit ng act, so i-apply namin yung cybercrime. Ang sabi ng cybercrime law is one degree higher than that provided in RA 9775. So ang penalty mo, reclusion perpetua na. So kaya na kailangan po in kapag ikaw ay nagsa, nag, pag, kapag kami po in sa panangkaso, nililate namin parati. Yung, um, Violation of Phonographic, uh, Phonography, Anti-Phonography Act doon sa Cybercrime Prevention Act. In the same manner po, kasi punishable act din po sa cybercrime law natin yung cybersex involving a child. So kapag ka po yung cybersex o yung willful engagement, maintenance, control, or operation po directly or indirectly of any lascivious exhibition of sexual organs or sexual activity with the aid of a computer system, for favor or consideration, kapag ang involved po dyan ay child, ang penalty po would be dun sa Child Pornography Act, tapos one degree higher po siya parati. So kung ang penalty mo, reclusion, temporal, minimum, automatic ang penalty mo, one degree, reclusion, temporal, maximum na. Ganun po yung application ng cybercrime law sa Anti-Child Pornography Act. So nakita po natin, no, pinataas niya yung penalty kapag bata po yung iyong bibiktimahin or victim survivor po ng iyong phonograph uh, ng iyong pong criminal uh, or mga acts po na, in, na unlawful acts po na covered ng anti-child phonography act. And then of course, meron tayong tinatawag na yung bullying, no? 
of 2013. Tatandaan lang natin sa anti-bullying, of course, um, kasama po dito pinipinalized yung tinatawag nating cyberbullying. Yan. So, um, kung ang, ang, ang slander statement for accusation that causes undue emotional distress po sa isang bata, ginamitan po ng information communication technology, then of course that would be par, uh, that would um, be uh, prosecuted or penalized under the Anti-Bullying Act of 2013. And then of course, um, yung bullying naman, kung, in, kung involved naman ay uh, gender-based online sexual harassment, no? So, i-apply mo naman yung Republic Act 11313. Okay? So, pwede mo rin gamitin tong batas na to. Kasi dito po sa RA 11313 or the Act Defining Gender-Based Sexual Harassment, kasama dito yung tinatawag na online. At paano nakukumit ito, yung gender-based online sexual harassment? So, ginagamitan mo siya ng information and communication technology sa pag-send ng physical, psychological, and emotional threats. And the impact of that is that it terrorizes it intimidate the victim thus threatening their person other uh, their sense of personal space and physical safety so the common uh, var- common forms po ng online sexual harassment under the safe spaces act is what we call physical psychological emotional threats if you remember uh, what sani alcos did no kay um, uh, sa anak po ni senator kiko no kay um uh, daughter niya to yung, i forgot the name ng daughter niya no sinabi niya na um Frankie. kung yeah si Frankie thank you very much ma'am um na sinabi niya na kay Frankie na pasalamat daw siya kasi kung 12 years old daw siya na pin daw niya celebrate niya and then magsumbong tinawag pa niya si Kiko dito si Senator Kiko actually ang tinap tina, sinabi pa niya dito na but sino so imagine mo napaka um uh, uh, live live bilis pa nung no, mga terms na ginamit niya rito so this this is a form of online sexual harassment, no? And then of course, anjan din po yung kapag ka po you um, say something na um, sex, uh, sila ay sexual in nature, misogynistic, transphobic, no? Or sexist remarks. Pwedeng dan mo siya publicly or through direct and private messaging, no? Pasok yan sa online sexual harassment. So this one is an example yung sinabi ni Juan Carlos kay Darren. Yung gayness at spiness, no? That is actually a transphobic or homophobic uh, remark. Kasama din po yung cyber stalking and incessant messaging kung saan you are, uh, yung privacy mo is being invaded already. Andyan din po yung, of course, yung ating pag-upload ng mga pictures, photos, or videos or any information online without the consent no, of the owner of the information. Uh, yung pag-impersonate ng victims, no, yung identities ng victims natin or posting lies about them. When you file false abuse reports para isilence po yung ating victims. So these are also forms of online child abuse and exploitation covered under RA 11313. So may mga batas po tayo. There are actually laws that we can uh, uh, utilize, no? Or pwede po gamitin if ever our children are victim of child abuse and exploitation online. Yan. Importante lang kinakailangan po alam natin at tayo po ay magre-report. So, may duty tayo no to report. So, kung may nakita ka, may manalalaman kayo na nangyayari po na pang-aabuso sa isang bata whether offline or online, no? You have the duty to report <clears throat> sa either DSWD, sa Barangay Council for the Protection of Children or to any law enforcement agencies. Don't worry. Under RA 7610, meron kayong immunity from suit kung kayo po ay nag-report in good faith. Okay? So remember that <clears throat> stopping online child abuse and exploitation technically <clears throat> would require an action from all of us. Responsibility natin lahat ito. No? It's a shared responsibility to stop online child abuse and exploitation. So we need to make a stand by choosing to end it. And what can we do no? further to prevent online child abuse and exploitation? Although sinasabi natin may mga batas na tayo, may current laws tayo that covers online child abuse and exploitation, there's still a need to advocate for stronger legal framework that criminalize all conducts related to online child abuse and exploitation. There is a pending bill in Congress now no, that covers this, yung tinatawating child abuse uh, and exploitation, particularly child sexual uh, abuse and exploitation online. no. Um, kasi nga po, sa 
current practice namin ngayon, what we do is, ina-apply namin yung mga batas together. So, parang walang specific law that um, criminalizes that particular online act. no? So, it's very important that we have a law we, and we advocate for that stronger legal framework to really address the, the type of exploitation that is that is being done on our child online. No? Number two, we have to advocate and cooperate with the private sector, such as the internet service providers, to implement measures to provide safe online environments for children. Kasi kung talagang lahat knowledgeable, no? hindi lang yung government agencies, but also even the private sectors, particularly the internet service providers, Globe, Tito, um, Smart, no? um, Facebook, yan, mga yan, no? mga social media, <laughs> nagmamanage yung mga social media platforms, lahat tayo ay nagko-cooperate to really end no? and make the, the online environment safe to children. Mawawala po talaga itong online sexual abuse and exploitation na to. And we have to educate and raise awareness about the different online risks and online safety. So yung parents po dapat, meron tayong regular training for parents on how to <clears throat> protect their children from uh, online sexual exploitation and abuse. So like ko sinasabi sa parents, um, kung may mga cellphone yung anak nyo, may gadgets yung anak nyo, may mga FB page yung anak nyo, no? tingnan nyo siya regularly. Um, Kung hindi man weekly, kahit on, on a monthly basis, tingnan nyo sino kausap ng anak nyo. No? And try to talk to these people also. Kasi baka mamin din alam, adult pala yung kausap niya. Read yung kanilang conversation. Ako, I do that, no? Um, I, I read the conversation of my daughter dun sa kanilang mga online games. And I don't allow my daughter to play with other people other than yung kanyang rela- yung, yung kanya po mga pinsa. So I, 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 tell my, I, I always tell my daughter na, you cannot play with any other uh, individual online. Ang dapat kalaro mo lang ay classmates mo or yung ano yung mga pinsan mo. And then uh, I ano I I take time to listen sa kanilang conversation. I also try to read no yung mga conversations nila every now and then even yung sa Facebook. Si Shepherd may Facebook yung anak ko, may Messenger. At dito na ko sino kausap. Even yung mga friends, pinakikialaman ko sino yung mga friends niya sa Facebook. Because as a parent, you need to ensure that you are properly educated and you are aware on the different risk no, online and how to ensure that your, ch- your children are safe online. And then, of course, you have to conduct research and, and collect relevant information to better enhance understanding about the scope and characteristics of online child abuse and exploitation. Continuous dapat po yung ating pag-aaral. We have to report. No, when you come across incidents of online child abuse and exploitation, wag tayong bystanders, no. Uh, one of the advocacy campaign of the Child's Advocacy Center of Miriam is yung avoidance of the bystander effect. So ano yung bystander, yung nanonood ka lang, video ka lang ng video. As uh, post mo sa Facebook, <laughs> yung bystander, no. Um as much as possible when you see that there is an abuse happening, report it. You have to become upstanders, okay? And then of course, you have to advocate for better resources for law enforcement and other frontline service providers so that they could they could perform their job well no and better and we have to provide support and care for victim survivors of child online abuse and exploitation yung binabanggit po ni sister MJ kanina very important holistic ang approach natin sa pagtulong sa victim survivors of child abuse okay so with that po maraming maraming salamat at lagi po tatandaan what hurt the victim most is not the cruelty of the oppressor, but the silence of the bystander. So if you see children being abused, you have to stand up. You have to make a stand. No? Huwag tayong manood lang. Okay? So with that po, maraming maraming salamat po. And I'm, I'm giving back the floor to our facility.
And we are back. Thank you very much, Attorney Miles, for that very comprehensive presentation on the legal framework on child protection. Matakot na ang mga perpetrators, no? Dahil one step up pala pag uh, uh, cybercrime yun, ano? So welcome to the question and answer portion of this session. We welcome back Sister Mary John and Attorney Miles. But before we proceed, may I just read some comments from our attendees from the Facebook and YouTube channel. From San Juan Patnubay, together we will Amen. end exploitation and abuse of children. Thank you, dear Sister Mary John. From Loretta Castro. Hi, hi, Dr. Castro. Yes, a whole nation approach. Thank you, Sister MJ. From Olet Ochave, well explained and easy to understand. Excellent speakers. From Peli Pedro, that's great. Let us all do the right thing. We are now joined by students, faculty, staff, parents from NCR, no Marikina, Manila, Quezon City. I, I'm reading the chat group. Parang nag attendance check pa yung ibang mga estudyante. No? From Las Piñas, La Union, Iligan City, Capiz, in Palawan, Baguio, Leyte, Dipolog, Legaspi, Bacolod, sa South Cotabato, Ifugao, Zamboanga, Sibugay, Bohol, Iloilo City, Tetuan, Zamboanga, and Guagua, Pampanga. So ang dami, no? maraming uh, from all over the Philippines talaga yung ating, ano, yung ating mga uh, nanunood. So are you ready for the questions now? Sige, from Olet Ochave. Olet is actually one of our members in the child protection team. Kindly give us specific activities or programs that skills can, can give to support systems like families or guardians to promote children's rights and prevent child abuse. So, dalawang question eh. One for the support system, families and guardians. And the other one, we would like to involve and empower our student leaders in this advocacy. Baka si sister makakasagot nito. Are there specific activities and programs which you can suggest for them? Sige po. Who wants to go? Who wants to answer? Specific activities and programs for the support systems, families, and guardians to promote child's rights and prevent child abuse and other uh, programs that can involve student leaders in this advocacy. Who wants uh, to answer? Sister Mary Jan? Uh, yeah, I was saying already, you know, the Cyber Guardian Philippines, we have we have uh, very regular, uh, what do you call these activities. For example, now yung Youth Summit. Mm -hmm. That is, my goodness, and daming nakikisari dyan, mga uh, 200 plus, no? Tapos, ang ikalawa yung tinatawag na Cyber Kwentuhan. Ito, mm -hmm. it comes regularly also. Ito pa, it, lahat ito youth, youth ano, parang ang pinofocus namin, youth ang magsasalita, youth ang mag, magsishare, etc., etc., no? Tapos, yung, yung nang sinasabi ko na meron kaming uh, pwedeng MOA of understanding with different organizations. Pag ka, kami nagkaroon na ng MOA sa, like, like for example now, uh, magsasign pa lang yung aming Association of Benedictine Schools. Mm -hmm. Ang gagawin na kaagad doon, makikipag- uh, ugnayan ang Cyber Guardian Philippines sa Dean of Student Affairs. Pagkatapos, yung youth, meron kaming talagang youth organization na talagang tinututukan nila about youth, uh, lahat ng mga ano. Then they will contact the, the student council of each school and doon sila mag, uh, magkakaroon ng ugnayan kung ano-anong mga activities ang gagawin nila. But yung regular sa amin, youth summit at saka, at saka cyber kwentuhan, in November, we are going to have one. I'm going to uh, give the data to CEAP for you to distribute to everybody. This okay. one, is, we are having now a 90-day preparation for that, no? So, okay. uh, I will give you the details, and I will also give you a tony, uh, Myla, no? Para sa yung ano. So, ibibigay ko sa inyo yan pag meron na kaming yung, ano, yung parang flyer namin, kasi November pa ito. Okay. Sige po, we will promote it in the network. Pero sister, itong Youth Summit at Cyber Kwentuhan, kahit wala pang Memorandum of Understanding, pwede na silang mag ah, oo. Itong Youth Summit at saka Youth ano, uh, Kwentuhan, for everybody yan. Itong Memo mo of Understanding, specific na magiging ano, uh, gagawin ng Cyber Guardians with specific schools. Pero okay. ito nationwide eh. 
nationwide okay. itong youth summit at saka ano. paano po nata, natin ma paano po makaka-access yung ating mga estudyante marami po kasi tayong estudyante na nanonood ngayon o kaya nga so, uh, uh, so, regularly oo oh, oh. kasi may nga, website kayo sister oh, oh. merong merong website okay pa merong so website we will, we will just get it from you and then we will post it yes um, yes so ibibigay ko sa inyong website namin para okay. Ibigay mo sa lahat. Ng ah, sige po. We That is what is wonderful kung meron kaming cooperation with you kasi ang dami niyong rich, no? Ang, ang lawak ng rich ninyo. Yung aming sige, schools. Sige, papatalo sa'yo. Ah, sige okay. po. Sige po. What about uh, uh, Attorney Miles? Meron ba kayong mga other programs that we, you, you would like to suggest to the students and to the family and guardians? Actually po dito, uh, very important yung participation po ng ating Parent Teachers Association or yung mga family councils. no? Kasi yung family councils po, they can actually sponsor programs on capacity building ng mga parents po within the school on uh, online safety and uh, of course yung um, mga different online risks. So kung yung mga schools po natin meron siya mga family councils, you can actually develop a program. Uh, para po turuan natin yung mga parents. Also, sa, sa Miriam College kasi po, they have this um, smart parenting no for for parents. So, meron kasi pong um, Parent Teacher Association ang Miriam College. And um, since our center is just um, recently inaugurated, no, kababa, bago lang kasi po yung um, Charles at Advocacy Center, part one of um, one of our um, activities in the pipeline po is to co communicate and coordinate po with uh, the Parent Teacher Association para po maipagpatuloy o mapalakas pa po yung kanilang mga sessions on smart parenting, on positive discipline, um, teaching them how to ensure that their children are safe online. No? And ano yung mga risk kung, um, kung ang mga bata ay parating engaged online. And then of course, uh, we, also, uh, we are also forging partnership with the Council on the Welfare of Children. So regularly kasi po the CWC they, they hold uh, seminars no uh, pagdating po sa child rights protection and promotion. So recently po pinost namin sa Facebook yung sa Facebook page po ng MC CRAC <coughs> yung link no yung invitation po ng CWC pagdating po dun sa mga sessions nila on children. So you can they can also visit po yung aming website kasi every now and then po um CWC communicate with us and then pinopost namin yung link. They can actually attend the webinars kasi it's for free. And then um doon naman sa mga student leaders, uh, I think you have to engage no yourselves in policy and decision making by you know uh, participating do sa mga uh, um, sessions in Congress for example no uh, sa paggawa ng mga bills and laws um, dito po sa child protection and promotion. Currently now, nakasalang po yung uh, bill, um, amending po yung, uh, or strengthening po, no? yung um, uh, batas pagdating po sa child sexual abuse and exploitation. So, isa din po yung sa mga gusto namin gawin sa CRAC, sa Miriam College, uh, engaging our student leaders to participate in policy decision making. Okay po, yun yung some of the pwede po nating magawa no para po sa ating parents, yung support system, and of course to our student leaders. Okay, thank you. Now, a uh, question from Lisha Rivadelo um, for Attorney Miles. What protection do schools and its personnel have when they report child abuse that happened at home? What is the best who is the best person to report an abuse that happens at home so that it will not be considered as hearsay? Okay. Um recently po uh, Miriam College through uh, CRAC and Child Rights Advocacy Center we developed po a program it's a, the, it's called Trauma Informed Care, no? Uh, it's for um the, the program is for uh, guidance counselors and homeroom advisors. Um, and um, because that that program in the, um, investions to have a a protocol. Yun po isa sa ginagawa namin ngayon. Protocol po kung paano magre-report ng abuse that happens uh, sa bahay. Kasi currently po, may patas naman tayo. Sinasabi po ng RA 7610 natin sa Implementing Rules and Regulation that um, any person na uh, nakaalam no? o nalaman na meron pang abusong ginagawa sa isang bata, you can actually report po sa DSWD. Inakamaganda po DSWD kasi yung social workers can do 
um, uh, home visitation or further po na investigation on the reported abuse. Or pwede po sa Barangay Council and Protection of Children or the law enforcement agencies. Now, ano yung protection ng teachers? Remember, um, under the law din po, you are immune from suit. Okay? Hindi po kayo pa pwedeng makasuhan criminally or administratively simply because you did your job of reporting. Okay. I have handled okay. cases po no, na teacher kinasuhan ng parent kasi nag, nag, uh, kin, sinabi niya, no, report niya sa DSWD. Napadismiss ko po yun. Gamit namin yung, yung provision na yon sa um, RA, 9, RA 7610, yung immunity from suit. Okay? And then of course, kung halimbawa naman nag-report ka and you don't want to to tell yung pangalan mo, DSWD naman po, the social worker from DSWD, will um, remain naman po yung iyong anonymity. Hindi niya sasabihin kung sino po yung nag... Okay? So may protection naman pala yung mga person yes. na nagre-report. Apo, apo. The next question from San Juan... I Pat think uh, Sister yeah. MJ is raising yung kanyang hand. Sorry, yeah, Sister. I'm raising my hand. Kasi I, yeah, have sister, also, sorry. I have also a question kay Atoni. <laughs> ah, okay ba? <laughs> Oo, kasi uh, pwede naman ito, di, di ba? Parang ano ito eh. Opo, pwede. Discussion, open discussion. Oo, kasi I, I also want to know certain things. I, I want to know especially yung intervention talaga ng DSWD. In fact, uh, ang Cyber Guardians, we, apply, uh, we are actually asking to have a face-to-face -face interview. I don't know lang, baka you know, sino ba yung talagang in charge ng, ng ano, ng uh, itong mga counseling, mga mga how they call it therapy for the victims of, of cyber uh, cyber crime i mean i am focusing on oseg no on online sexual mm -hmm. exploitation sino sa C sa dswd ang in charge kasi gusto naming makausap kasi alam mo meron din yung yung halimbawa yung vice chairperson ko si his father mm -hmm. uh, chodolo uh, i am sure kilala niyo siya sa ano sa ateneo yung family counseling na ateneo we we want to assess in fact we are we are even trying to get yung psychology yang pilipino yata sa 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 UP to make a study ano na ang nangyari kasi this is more than 10 or 15 years ano nangyari sa binigyan ng intervention ng DSWD itong mga tapos na naka, naka integrate ba sila uh, na ano ba sila ano yung resulta yun ang gusto namin kasi Si Father uh, Ted is willing, halimbawa, to make, ano, fitting modules. Kasi ibang-iba talagang klase ito, no? So, uh, pwede ba, Atone, can you just give me a contact with the SWD na the ones in charge of this, uh, ano, psych counseling program, rehabilitation program, reintegration program? Because we want to know how we as cyber guardians can help augment, supplement, whatever. Uh, the SWD is doing. No? So that is one. And number two, itong ano ka, sabi mo nga, di ba ang ganda-ganda ng mga laws natin, pero yeah. you are agreeing with me na implementation natin is very poor. Di ba? Yes. Because, yes. Na, naku, iban yung mga iban yung mga ano, yung mga kagawad, mga mga barangay chairperson, hindi man nila alam, iban lang yung ano, yung uh, WAUSI or yung mga, yung 9262, hindi nila alam po ano ang responsibilidad nila. Diba? So sino ba ang nagbibigay ng pag-aaral sa mga ito? Sa mga sa mga kagawad, sa mga chairperson, sa mga taong nasa gobyerno na magmatyag. Like for example, sa akin ng LGU, they have the, the responsibility to really go around their barangay uh, many times, hindi lang once a year. Kasi doon nila lang makikita kung saan nangyayari itong cybercrime, di ba? O sino ba nagbibigay ng pag-aaral sa mga LGU about this? Ha, hindi ko alam. Do you know? Actually sister ganito po. Um doon sa unang tanong ni sister no, yung sino ang pwedeng kontakin when it comes to uh, victim survivors. Ang um sa, before kasi po I used to work with the SWD. Pero uh, siguro that was the last uh, I, I retired I I left the SWD po 2006 eh. When I uh, after passing the bar, no, I, I was transferred to another office. But uh, ang setup kasi po namin, remember that evolved kasi yung programs and services ng um, basic na, na, na DSPD. So merong local. But the DSPD central office kasi po yung national maintains pa rin po yung regional offices. And in the regional offices po, sister, meron silang tinatawag na com-based sections. 
so committee based no so meron po silang committee based division or unit na lahat po ng mga programs pagdating sa committee based and that includes po yung ating child protection and promotion sa kanila po pwedeng i-link so may mga social workers po doon na pwede po kausapin para po tulungan tayo doon sa mga programs na pang com based meron din pong residential so yun po yung um, i used to work in a residence facility ng disability so Sir, pwede po Yes, sister. Excuse me, Atone. Isn't there Apo. a centralized? Kasi I suppose there is naman siguro uh, parang uh, manual of ganito or ganyan. There has to be a general. <laughs> ang tingin ko lang, ano, kung, kung ako yung Apo. nasa gobyerno, kung ako ang nada sa DSWD, there has to be first a general policy, a general gato. Tapos pati yung mga module-module, yung, yung mga uh, ah, ano, class and counseling, dapat yan, alam ng ng ano ng At central central uh, yeah. hindi Sister, regional yeah. ang ibig niyo sabihin Apo. it's regional as its own kakatawa naman yun no, no sister actually po every every policy that the region implements come from the central office kasi yeah. I, I used to work yeah. with central yeah. office so sa central office po sister uh, hmm. the one that is tasked is the social protection bureau um meron po sila ng social protection yun po social yung social protection bureau bureau po yun bureau po yun sa central office so doon po nakaladge yung ano yung yung sila po yung gumagawa ng mga policies or guidelines pagdating po sa paano i-implement yung mga programs developed naman po ng social technology. But there is also still specific for uh, for child protection, di ba? Kasi meron po may general may, naman yung social protection. Yes, sister. Um when I was working child. Yeah, meron, when I was working with this with this sister, when I was with Social Protection Bureau, ang focus ko po is Women and children. So, ako po yung oh. staff. Ah, kaagad, Tapos, women and children. Yes, mm. opo. May, so, meron po talaga, may, may mga tao po kayong pwedeng kausapin. For example, kung adoption yan, si Miss ganito yan, or merong unit ng adoption. Kung women and children naman, merong, merong unit din po yan na in charge doon. Kung residential... You do, the, you do not know the particular person who is heading it now? Ah, sister, what I can do po, sister, is I can call my friends. Oh, di ba, my yes. friends talaga from I the SBD and I can very Yes and I can ano po I can connect you sister sa kanila. Ah oh, sige. Ay okay. mas aganda yon. Yeah. yeah. I'll get so, na lang sister your number para uh -huh. pwede ko po ibigay yung number ko sa chat. Sige sister, I'll get your number po. Tapos oh, kausapin okay. ko po yung mga kasi nandoon po po yung mga kaibigan ko sa departamento and then I can give you po yung I can give them your number para magkausap po kayo. Ayun na, nandiyan na. Right. So thank you, no? Thank you, sister, for your question, and thank you, Attorney Miles, for answering. Actually, bukas, sister, may representative kami from the barangay para rin malaman natin how we can collaborate and where they are getting their information, no? And the mechanism for in for collaborating on child protection in the locality. Okay, uh, sister, there's a question here. Baka you can answer from San Juan Patnubay. Is there a group or a movement of men who can be more intent on advocating for the safety and security of children? Ano, ano? So, parang, mga, parang mga group, mga babae yung grupo eh. Parang gano'n yata ang sinasabi niya. Is there well, a group or a movement of men? Uh, alam mo kasi, ang, ang, ang ano ngayon, ang overall organization, ito na nga ang Cyber Guardian Philippines. No? Okay. But yun nga, that's why we are say, I'm saying that we are having partnership with, yes. uh, with different Our organizations. Yes. No? So, at saka yung mga, ano, yung mga women's group, they are not really for uh, against cybercrime, but ang, ang in, sinasuggest namin sa kanila, ipasok nila sa programa nila. I mean, we realize that they have a bigger, uh, ano, focus. Women, for example, like Gabriela, pero dapat ipasok nila sa programa nila, sa advocacy nila. But right now, ang talagang uh, tutok na tutok talaga sa cybercrime is the Cyber Guardian Philippines. Kami okay. yun. Okay. All right. So, yan yung sagot na ni Sister San Juan Patnubay. From Karen Ocampo, thank you po, Sister and Attorney, for an informative discussion. There are instances that the perpetrator of child abuse is within the family. If the child happens to disclose such a traumatic experience to school personnel, parang similar to kanina, how can the school best handle the case? Okay. I'll be speaking na lang on based on my experience po, ha, which is yun nga po yung isa po sa ginagawa namin ng protocol ngayon sa MC. It's one of the project of the CRAC ng Miriam College, yung protocol in management. No? So um, in, in my experience po, what usually I tell the teachers, no, 
uh, you have to, of course, if there's a disclosure, you have to check kung safe pa ba, kasi safety ang unang titignan mo eh, best interest of the child. Safe pa ba yung bata umuwi o hindi? If the child, it's if, it, if the environment is no longer safe, then you have to um, either call the DSWD or any child caring institution para po yung bata, para, para magkaroon po ng intervention sa bata. Kasi there are instances that we pull out the child. Hindi okay. namin pa uwi na. So from the, the DSWD can actually go to the school and then nadalahin na po yung bata sa center, inform na lang po yung parents. And then sasabihin na there's, an, uh, there's a disclosure ng bata about that, especially if it's sexual in nature. Okay? Um, so isa po yun. So yun po yung po yung, yung, yung lagi namin sinasabi sa mga teachers which they can do to protect. Kasi ang lagi po tatandaan natin is the paramount uh, consideration in everything that we do should be the best interest of the child. Yeah. Kasi as much as possible, safety ang atin dapat pong focus. Primary concern natin is safety. Kung, that, kung yung bata po ay may mga uh, disclosure na siya ay sinisimula ng sexually molest mm -hmm. ng family member, of course, ayaw na natin tumuloy pa yon Kasi baka mga pag pinauwi mo yon kung dati hi po yan, baka sexual talaga sexual intercourse yung mangyari sa bata. So, yun yung ating pinipipin. So, technically, yun po yung um, lagi namin sinasabi. But now, um, sa ngayon po, meron kami project sa CRAC, sa Charles Advocacy Center, of creating the manual or the protocol po. Uh, putting putting things in proper perspective and in place for schools. Okay. At Hopefully, we will able to share it po sa inyo. Pag yes, natapos. please, please. And this can be shared naman with uh, our other schools, no? as yes, template or something. Pero, uh, so, saan dinadala yung bata? Uh, will the child stay with a government facility? Or ano ba yan? Ine-endorse ba yan sa mga kagaya ng groups na sinasabi ni Sister Mary John? Yeah, okay. Ano? Um, meron kasi po mga um, child caring facilities po that they are licensed and accredited by the SWD. Okay. So, hindi lang naman po automatic sa child care uh, sa government facility. For example, um, sa so, when the child is endorsed to the child protection unit CPUPGH po no um meron kami mga contact po ng mga different child care institutions na run by uh, of course yung ating po mga religious organizations or civil society organizations so kino-contact po namin yan so doon po sila uh, temporarily po siya shelter or hina house para mabigyan po ng appropriate intervention but of course ang amin pa rin pong end goal is uh, magkaroon ng social integration ulit yung bata So kung hindi po talaga pwede sa pamilya, we look for relatives, no? Na papasa po sa parental capability assessment ng DSWD, no? At pinakini case conference po namin yan. Sa CPU po we do case conference. Like for example, o attorney mo kaya case kanta yon kasi yung bata may nakita kami parent na may may nakita kami relative na pwedeng sa kanya i i ano i i release yung bata, no? from 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 the center. Pinag-uusapan namin 'yan yung capability kung talaga bang capable yung 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 relative o hindi. So hindi po basta-basta nire-release 'yon. May mga ganyan pong uh, uh, processes or multidisciplinary approaches po kami ini-employ. Oh, okay. So at least no we know Actually, that Actually, I'm um, essay something. Yes, sister. Yes, sister. Actually, nakipag uh, some RGS sisters, alam niyo mayroon sila ring mga homes kasi. Yeah. Pwede oh. doon ding ilagay at Nakipag-usap na ang Cyber Guardians kasi with ano yung sinabi ko kanina na ano anong pangalan nito yung yung um, uh, Laura Bicuña mm -hmm. nung kinuwento namin sa kanya itong nangyari kasi ang kina, ang right now ang kanilang uh, kinukupkop yung talagang uh, yung bang ano yung incest yung talagang physical na ano ngayon uh, they are willing also to ano to accept uh, uh, cyber crime victims so na Siguro the the CW, DSWD would like to know that the, this is an organization. You you should have become hanggang 18 years old na yeah. pinukupkop nila. Uh, Pero the sister of Saint Marys, ah, uh, may mga yung Saint Marys po sa Tagaytay. Uh, Don dati po nung when when I was working with the uh, DSWD uh, facility, um, don namin ini endorse niya po yung mga bata kasi nakapag-aral po sila. So parang normal ba yung ano, normal yung yung kanilang lifestyle pa rin para hindi hindi po uh, kumbaga parang facility institution na institution ang ang dati pero, kasi uh, siya at uh, only yes, ang, ang gobyerno walang ganoon. I mean you have, they have to go to uh, private uh, pangalang uh, homes to do that. Meron ba sila talagang homes sa kagayan yes, ng ano Laura Bicuña? 
Yes, sister. Meron pong um, nationally managed po na centers ang uh-huh. DSWD. So, for example, for women po, we have the National Center for Women. Um, uh-huh. The National Center is in Alabang. Okay. So, may field invest po. And then, we have regional havens. Mm-hmm. Tapos, uh, para akong DSWD na. Dati po kasi ako taga-DSWD, so I handled women's programs. <laughs> for you po mga youth naman po, we have home for girls. And then, of course, we have the rehabilitation Uh, study Center for Children. Yun yung para po sa mga mga bata. Y- yun ang gusto kong tanungin doon sa SDSWD para yes. mas madali kami makipag-ugna. Oh, yes. by the way, I have put I have put in chat lahat ng aming uh, lahat ng aming everything. Uh, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, uh, 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 oh, lahat. We will, we, ano, we will send this to all the participants po. Oo, oh, so nilagay ko na dyan, no? Okay. Yeah. So, pero attorney, yung mga centers na yon if if it's a private institution sino nagbabayad to have the to have the child there actually libre po doon si libre po doon ma pag ni-refer And namin libre po yon wala pong binabayaran basta, basta referred by yeah, the government yeah opo these are non-profit organizations kasi po eh tapos they are accredited and licensed by DSWD kasi may licensing and accreditation po ang uh, ang national the SWD pagdating po sa child caring facilities and institutions. Pero attorney, I think don't you think that yes, we should make we should make that research na to see the ano the the effect of your intervention, no? Yeah. Kaya dapat yes, yung sister, mga I yung parang po. mga tracer at no? tracer yes, okay. dapat malaman natin ano na ang nangyayari sa kanila adult na sila mm-hmm. ngayon. Nagkaroon ba yes, ng nagkaroon ba ng time, tunay na healing? Yeah. Yeah. Nagkaroon ba mm-hmm. silang tunay na healing? Nagkaroon ba talaga ng proper integration sa community? Anong nangyari sa parents sila? Nagkabati ba sila? Or, or, gusto kong malaman yun eh. <laughs> Di ba? Yes, It that's true, sister. Yeah. Tama po. I agree with you po, sister. Kasi yung mga clients ko before when I was still a social worker, nalaman ko po yung kumusta na sila ngayon because they are now my friends in Facebook. Sabi nila, attorney, uh, ay, at ma'am, lawyer na pala po kayo. So, I'm now oh, in Canada. I mean, I have with my, I, I'm living with my family na po. So, yeah, yun, yun iba. Na, 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 nalalaman ko na lang yung, yung kanilang integration um, because they are now my friends in Facebook. But of course, it's a very, very good po na project, sister. So marami na mang nakamove on. Marami na mang nakamove on at all. Yes, opo, yung mga yung mga women clients. Pero ang mahal kasi ng ano, we, we are having a partnership with psychology. Ano nga tawag yon? Philippine Psychological Association of the Philippines. Ako mga million at least 1 million yung yung ano, yung magagasta namin, 1.5 yeah, million. Kasi yes, sister kasi eh. mga individual interviews, mga ganung ganun mm-hmm. no. Tahanapin po pa tong mga taong ito na ganito. Pero napakaimportante, 'di ba, na malaman natin ano na nangyari. At kung may mga failures, anong gagawin natin doon sa yes. nag-fail to integrate, nag-fail to be healed. Paano gagawin natin doon sa mga 'yon, 'di ba? Correct mm-hmm. sister. So, kasi ah, I, remember, sister. I remember, sister, ang CPUPJH, they ventured into that kind of study, but I think the focus was on legal, on the legal aspect. Ah, no. Inanap nila yung, 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 yung mga... Yung holistic aspect, yung human yeah, okay. aspect. Gusto ko mang, malaman anong nangyari sa biktima. Hmm. Ano? Alam mo That's kasi, good, ano po, uh, a chair din ako ng ano, Women Crisis Center, which is now called Women Care Center. Alam mo ginawa namin sa lahat ng mga mga binigyan namin ng counseling, etc., naging kliyente namin. Meron kami ngayong survivors group, no? Uh, so, that is a parang mutual support. Nagkakaroon ng konting programa for them, uh, education, um, further counseling, mga ganun. Siguro napaka-importante siguro na magkaroon din ng organization ng, ng mga, ano, yung mga, yung mga, ano nga, survivors. They are no long, gusto ko sana hindi na sila biktima from mm-hmm. victim to survivor to advocate. Na po, yun ang yes. ating ano, yun ang ating goal no, from victim magkaroon sila ng survivor tapos magkaroon sila ng advocacy. But mm-hmm. you cannot do that unless you organize them. So meron yes. pang organization. Yun ang gusto kong tang- Parang wala. Parang wala. Survivors group sister no. It's Oo, a survivor. Wala group. gawin natin attorney. Sige Pag sister, ano I'm <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, We can yeah. actually yeah. tayo, tayo ng ano, survivors group ng mga cyber crime victim, di ba? Yes, okay. O kasama natin ng CEAP. Yes, diba? sige, sister. Sige <laughs> natin yan. 
<laughs> okay, nako, napaka napaka rich ng discussion natin but unfortunately it's 11 o'clock already, hindi uh-huh. natin napansin ang oras. Sister, gagawa ka ng isang desk para diyan sa survivors group natin at kami ni Attorney Mylan tutulong diyan yes, para. Opo, sister. Uh, alam mo, we'll actually ang, ang, ang sasabihin ko sa inyo, ang cyber group uh, Cyber Guardian Philippines, ang opisina na nila sa Institute of Women Studies. I gave them a <laughs> I gave them a room there. So doon talaga, pati lahat ng aming mga, parang yun lang sa SEC namin, sa SEC uh, permission namin, doon ang aming official, oh, okay. Okay. official na ano na bahay sa oh. Institute of Women Studies. Why? Kaya yun din would be the center of our survivors group. Pag-usapan lang natin later on, paano pa natin magagawa itong survivors group? Yes, sige, no? sister po. Magbigil po tayo Pero, after. Pagkatapos ah, yung ano. Very much need to partner with you, sister. <laughs> oh, pagkatapos yung research natin, kasi dapat may research muna tayo, di ba? Mm-hmm. Eh, research muna natin kung anong nangyari sa kanila. And then afterwards, let's see who can be a part of the survivors group. Na yung survivors group na yon, sana magtulong-tulungan din yung mga hindi talaga nahil, yung mga ano, na sila ang tutulong, di ba? Okay, sister. Sige po. So we have reached the end of our session today. Siguro as a as a final message, sister, baka you might want to say something to our listeners and our audience right now. Ah, then, well, sa akin talaga, let us have a sense of urgency. This is really an urgent matter because these children are going to be, to be the future citizens of our country. Ano mangyayari sa ating country kung ang maraming citizens niya ay talagang mentally broken? So talagang, uh, ang, uh, ito hindi lang ito maliit na bagay. This is nationwide. That's why whole nation approach. Kaya yeah. lahat tayo, lahat kayong nakinig. Dapat hindi lang kayong nakinig. Dapat, dapat kayong gagawin. Kung hindi, ay ano, hindi yung whole nation. Dapat whole nation and whole people's approach. Yun lang po. Let us all fight to stop this cybercrime. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Attorney Miles. Well, I agree po. 100%, 101% with Sister MJ. <laughs> no? Remember, um, ending child abuse and exploitation is a shared responsibility of all of us. So, kinakailang gumalaw na tayo. Sabi, like ko sinasabi to, kung hindi ngayon, kailan pa? Kung Tama. hindi tayo, sino? Sino ba? pa? Kinakailang okay. tayo. Ako, okay. Okay. Aktivista yata tayo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, moto ng mga, moto ng aktivista yun eh. Hindi <laughs> <Uh-oh. laughs> <laughs> 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 <So, laughs> <so, laughs> tayo sino. Okay, so perhaps not just to synthesize, the work of child protection as our two resource persons cannot help but overemphasize is a shared responsibility of the whole nation. So we should take on a whole nation approach. No? A signatory also to various international groups that protects the rights of the child. We should know all the laws and the mechanisms that safeguard the rights and protection of their children. And as our president, Sister Marisa, said yesterday, we should always have a culture of care not only at home and in school but I believe for the whole nation. All right. so before we end, may I just remind you that you will receive your certificate of attendance only upon completion of the evaluation form. The link is already posted in the comment section of this page and on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Again, please note that the link is now live and will remain open until 5 p.m. today. So from now to 5 p.m., those who have not Watch yet, please still watch and evaluate this session. We encourage you to answer the evaluation form and you will receive your certificate of attendance within the next three to five days. Please also note that the PowerPoint slides of all our sessions for the 2022 Child Protection Pro- Summit will be made available at the CEAP website www.cap.org.ph and you can download them uh, in PDF format. So the materials of yesterday are already there and we will also upload the ones that Sister Mary John and Attorney Miles used today. We would like to thank our web host, Rock Society, and of course, the Private Education Assistance Committee for being such wonderful partners for this Child Protection Summit. We invite you to join us tomorrow for our last day where we will talk about collaborating for child protection in the period of transition. 
So on behalf of, of our president, Sister Marisa Viri RVM, and the CEAP Board of Trustees, Mr. Jose Alan Arellano, our Executive Director and the National Secretariat, this has been Mary Ann Cruz, your Deputy Executive Director, saying thank you and good morning. Thank you.